Did militarization really ruin GTA Online? This question became a hot topic in 2018 with the After Hours update. It wasn't just about the Oppressor Mark II but rather things that had been added to the game up to that point with the Gunrunners, Doomsday and eventually After Hours DLC. The question has been a matter of debate by some players and I think it could be interesting to have that discussion now in 2022 after all the updates with GTA Online in its current state. In my opinion the situation is a bit more nuanced than to be answered just by a yes or no. Before everything we should analyze the question itself. Did militarization ruin GTA Online? I'm pretty sure we could all agree that by militarization we mean the addition of military vehicles to the game and by ruin, I usually see there are two cases that are proposed by people. One, that the addition of military and futuristic vehicles to GTA Online out of its original form, which is a game about crime and, and being a gangster. Two, the fact that vehicles could fall into wrong hands in a multiplayer environment. For example, a griefer, a guy who kills people for no reason, a KD farmer before the KD in free mode got removed. We're gonna get into both of these arguments, but first we should make a quick distinction between military and futuristic vehicles. See, for example, the Luxo, Vigilante, Scramjet, Oppressor Mark II, Torridor are futuristic vehicles, whereas Savage, Buzzard, Hydra, Chernobyl are military vehicles. What is the difference, you might ask? I would argue that usually in the generic works of entertainment, whether science fiction or action movies, you would see these futuristic vehicles at the hands of either protagonists or the villains. Sure, in real life, a car that jumps and has a rocket boost and shoots missiles shouldn't be available to civilians. But, but in the movies, I we usually see them in the hands of either the protagonist, the good guy, or the villain, the bad guy. And military vehicles, based on their name, well, they are at the hands of military. Now, let's discuss some of the arguments from an anti-militarization point of view and try to provide some counter-arguments for them. One argument that I see from the people who are against the militarization is that it takes GTA away from its original form, which is a game about crime and being a gangster. It feels like that this is more towards the futuristic vehicles, and this is proportionately a reasonable concern. However, there is a catch. When people say futuristic vehicles in these contexts, they are usually talking about the Oppressor Mark II, in many cases. For example, no one talks about the Stromberg or the Torridor or the Arena War Future Shock Vehicles, and I agree 100%. In my opinion, Oppressor Mark II is too futuristic to be in this game. As for the other ones... Well, when we talk about GTA being about crime and the total integrity of the game, you have to take into account that all these futuristic vehicles have been added to GTA Online, which is kind of separate from the actual GTA V and the, and the entire GTA franchise. My guess is that they won't add all these futuristic vehicles to the GTA 6, not to the story mode at least. I hope and I believe they know better than to let their game go the way of Call of Duty and Saints Row. And I'm saying this as a fan of futuristic games. And I'm pretty sure many of us want GTA as a franchise to remain GTA. That's why I think in some way it is not that much of a concern that GTA Online received some futuristic vehicles at some point. I have another counter argument. They say GTA is about crime and the addition of military vehicles takes the game away from its original form. Well, the thing is, crime is crime and it takes different shapes and forms according to the material circumstances. Allow me to show you with an example. This is Fernando, this is Alex. Fernando is an extremely rich and powerful criminal mastermind. And then you have Alex, some gangster in the hood. 
Fernando is looking to put together some gold bars so he can buy a futuristic tank so he can drop an extremely fortified place for more gold bars. Alex on the other hand is looking to put together some bikes so he can buy himself a submachine gun so he can drop the supermarket in his hood. What both these people are doing is fundamentally the same thing. Crime. They're both bad people, they're just doing it at different magnitudes. I think it's a good thing that the game allows you to start as an Alex and then become a Fernando with time and effort and then still being able to operate as the same level as Alex. I think it's not bad that the game allows you to become a really huge criminal with all this crazy stuff in his possession. In my opinion, this aspect of versatility outweighs the aspect of pure street crime. Another one is the fact that these vehicles are used by some people to hurt other people. And this is a pretty huge concern. We're mostly talking about the griefing scenario. In my opinion, the core concept of griefing is actually kind of interesting. You're a criminal trying to sell your stuff and then there's another criminal who's looking to rob you of your stuff. However, this would have been fun if one criminal wasn't on a flying bike that shoots missiles and the other criminal in a van that has the top speed of a scooter. So people here bring the argument that well grinders also use those vehicles to grind and yes that's absolutely true but here's the thing in a griefing scenario you have a griefer and a grinder both of these people are players the griefer shoots and destroys the cargo of the grinder he gets little to nothing benefit of of it barely two thousand dollars and in this scenario a person gets hurt a player gets hurt but in a grinding scenario it's player versus ai versus npcs no one's getting hurt it's just that player getting the benefit and no one here is getting hurt now on this your for npc rights are you're sad that mendes got shot it should be clear that how these vehicles are in the favor of griefers more than they are in the favor of grinders or other players but then it's not entirely about grinders and griefers and you could make that argument for some other vehicles in the game. Yes, Oppressor Mark II is an abomination, but what about Hydra? Many griefers use it and it's not just griefers, many other types of players and even grinders use it. And it was even in GTA San Andreas. Well, maybe the explosive cannons are a bit too much, but then what about laser? It has been in the game since the launch. I think vehicles should not be measured with the mode of how harmful they are for the grinders or how useful they are for griefers only. Well, maybe except Oppressor Mark II. And this brings us to the pro-militarization side. One argument I see from this side is that it's fine as it is, it's just that Rockstar should balance these vehicles. I agree and I think changes like Oppressor Mark II's nerf or the fact that you cannot get into passive mode in military vehicles are steps in that direction. But then the thing is Rockstar might not have done great enough. Still you have the scenario of a fighter jet with explosive cannons versus a van that can barely outrun a Faggio. I think the solution would be that Rockstar should add more anti-griefing measures that would not benefit the griefers. Like for example, new vehicles for the sales missions. And I honestly don't think that's gonna happen. But I think the current state of GTA Online is okay in that regard. But there's a catch. What about the low level players? Unfortunately, that is an inevitability. If they were going to radically change the game in a way that would benefit the players with lower levels, that would hurt the game in my opinion. Again, the fact that some people enjoy picking on low level players is just a person problem. One other argument from this side is that without unique vehicles, 
bit militarized or futuristic, the updates would be kind of boring. The counter argument to that would be, sure, some of those vehicles are very fun to use, but recent updates such as the LS car meet showed that this is not necessarily the case. Some people might enjoy these vehicles, some people might be indifferent. Again, it boils down to the people and their taste. All in all, I would say that GTA Online right now is in a relatively good state. Sure, if you're a new player, it might be frustrating at some point, but you'd eventually get there with time and effort. I personally started with a gun running update and was into grinding when the after hours came out. So at times it was like hell, but I'm glad that it paid off. At the end, we play GTA Online to use and enjoy these vehicles and features. And mind you that now people might assume that there are problems with militarization and there are some valid criticisms. Back in the day, military vehicles in GTA were an end goal. People would want to get their hands on a tank in GTA Vice City. Our people would be excited for the mission in GTA San Andreas where you have to get on an aircraft carrier and steal a Hydra. Or even here in GTA V. Back in the day, people would use the ramp to get into Ford Zancudo and steal a Hydra. My point is, sure there have been problems with these vehicles and how they affected the game, but now that they are here in the game after all of these years, we should just try to enjoy them. Thank you so much for watching this video, this will probably be one of my final GTA videos, that doesn't mean I'm just quitting GTA. I'll make videos as soon as I have an idea and or there is new content, but I'm planning to move on to newer types of content and making videos about some other games that I enjoy playing and talking about. And for now, I might not be around for a while, I've got some real life matters I have to attend. I'm moving abroad soon and I'll just, just this week I'll have to take an IELTS exam. I'm um, working on my master thesis and I have to get it done by the end of next month. But that doesn't mean I won't see you around. I'll eventually get back with new content. In case you sometimes watch my videos or you just found this video, which I truly appreciate. Well, that was about it. Thank you so much for watching again. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe and I'm going to see you around. Goodbye.